We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloop Cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, dear Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know, um, you know, as I, as I look at the screen, as I look at OBS over here, which does our screen recording, I realize I'm very hard to see in this black sweater. I kind of look like a floating head. <laughs> at least uh, like just just this part of it here jared not yeah. not your whole whole face just just from like more cheekbone light. up cheekbone up I to forehead more, i need more light <laughs> but i'm not gonna fix that now because we're already recording and i don't like to edit the video ever so we roll i'm a floating head this episode that's how that's, that's just how things are gonna be kind of we have a very busy we are, episode we are, let's not we are, goof we around are jared now we are now, Jared, in postseason form here. We're into our silly season mode. Silly season. It's the first silly so season you, in months. I know. So what, what do we got in our first silly season of the 2024 year? Silly season, if you don't know, silly season is uh, kind of that stuff that happens right after the season. It has to do with coaching changes, personnel changes, um. Not just that, but those are the two examples coming to my mind because that's what we're talking about today. So that falls firmly into silly season. Um, and that's what we're talking about. Uh, there have been some coaching changes, Kyle. Yeah, just a few. Just a few. Well, you, you just uh, four. So far. So far. We, we, have, we have three coaches out. We have one coach in. And, uh, well, let's, let's talk about the one coach, uh, one coach out Perry Eliano safety, uh, coach is out. Um, he has been replaced by Matt Guerrero. Um, Guerrero is, uh, coached for Jim Knowles before, uh, he is, uh, he, he coached for Knowles, um, for six years at Duke, uh, Three of those as a graduate assistant, and then three of those as the co-defensive coordinator. Kyle, he became the co-defensive coordinator under Knowles at Duke at 26 years old. 26 years old, he became a defensive coordinator. He's he's younger than us, Jared. Oh, much. Um, Not by much, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. He... Uh, after Knowles left for Oklahoma State, Guerrero was then um, the co-defensive coordinator at Duke for three years at Duke. Uh, so he's what? 29? Becomes a co-defensive coordinator? Um, then the entire Duke staff got got let go when David Cutcliffe was let go. And that coincided with Knowles leaving Oklahoma State to Ohio State. So then uh, he was a graduate assistant uh, or a quality control coach is probably the better way of saying that at Ohio State uh, for one year. Then Indiana poached him. He became the co-defensive coordinator and safety coach at Indiana for one year. And, and, and I believe Indiana just torched their staff as well. So now. Uh, uh, Jim Knowles really wanted him back, so they made some room for him, and he's back. Kyle, I think this is a uh, young, up-and-coming guy. Could see him be... I, I don't know if he's going to be a co-DC at Ohio State or not. I've not seen that he is, so until I've seen that, I'm going to assume he's not. But he could mm -hmm. be, and, you know, depending upon how long Knowles sticks around, this could be a guy who ends up taking over the defense one day. Possibly, possibly, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Who, who else? Who else have we got out? Who, who's who's the other? Uh, we've other coach uh, that's out. We've been anticipating, borderline asking, for this one for a while. Parker Fleming, the special teams coordinator, is is gone. Um, Ohio State had a dedicated special teams coordinator, which in the world of college football, where you only have eleven official coaching staff. Um, dedicating someone specifically to special teams is rare. And if you're going to do that, your special teams should be special. They, they should be excellent. And Ohio State special teams was there. 
it was there. Nothing spectacular. Nothing horrid. Just, just the pun. Just the punter and kicker. That was it. I, but that's you know, that's often up to the individual punters and kickers who are who are good, not necessarily the coordination of the special teams. Uh, we are already he already has a PhD in the Knowles system. Uh, feel like that would be critical, especially after 2024, um, when there'll be a large roster turnover. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the roster. Um, we're, we're doing two episodes this week, so look out for the Tuesday episode as well. We're going to talk about the roster, uh, in the Tuesday episode. So we'll, we'll get around to that. Uh, we're talking coaches on, on this one. Uh, so uh, Kyle, apparently the plan with Parker Fleming uh, is to replace him with a defensive coaching staff member. It's been a thing that many people in the Ohio State beat, including Kyle and I, but certainly not limited to Kyle and I have talked about that there were too many damn offensive coaches and not enough damn defensive coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Is and there's cer certain coaches that are getting up there in age there, and I need to need to start thinking about their their replacement or trying to find someone who can slowly um who can slowly get out get out at Ohio State and in, into retirement but yet not lose not lose any anything that's already there on the defensive side so i think sure. i think i think that's what i think that's what Ohio State should be doing and most likely probably will be no, doing I here is i don't know if i'm going to say most likely uh i think i've heard we've heard two separate rumors um about what's going to happen with uh, Fleming's going to be replaced with a defensive coach. That that feels like that's a certainty. Now, mm -hmm. the two conflicting rumors that we are hearing, um, and maybe it just depends upon who Ohio State can find for a potential second defensive line coach, which is what Kyle was alluding to. Ohio State bringing in a second defensive line coach. Uh, that's one of the rumors that's out there uh, to sort of transition Larry Johnson out of Ohio state as he is getting very up there in age. Uh, the other rumor, however, is James Laurinaitis is currently on staff and there's a lot of people, um, including Kyle and I at different points during the season have advocated to make James Laurinaitis a full-time staff member. Um, I don't have to tell Ohio state fans about James Laurinaitis credentials, uh, whether at Ohio state or with the Rams um, he's already coaching the linebackers, essentially, technically speaking, coach Knowles, Jim Knowles is the linebacker coach, but he's also the defensive coordinator. So a lot of the day to day linebacker coaching, um, is, is being done by James Laurinaitis. However, since he's not a full-time staff member, he can't go out on the road and recruit. And there's other limitations, uh, but, Jared, but with, with there being an open slot now with, with Parker Fleming out, uh, until his until another Correct. coach has come in, Lord Laurinaitis can now go out and do some recruiting now. Yeah, it's like a temporary recruiting staff member. Um, yes. I know some people saw him out recruiting. There are pictures online of him out recruiting. People are like, "Oh, does that mean he's the linebacker coach now?" And no, no, it doesn't. There's a special provision that says. And by the way, Ohio State's actually down two coaches right now. Um, as you know, they, they have the replacement for Eliano, but they don't have the replacement for either Fleming or Dennis at this time. Um, so bringing James Laurinaitis, let Jim Knowles be strictly the lot or the defensive coordinator guy. He doesn't even do a position. He's just the defensive coordinator. Laurinaitis takes over the linebackers. Now you have a linebacker coach, a safety coach, a defensive line coach and a cornerback coach. And you have a defensive coordinator who is separate from all of those. And that makes a lot of sense. Um, and if that happens, dollars to donuts, it'll be James Laurinaitis. That's that's what will happen. Um, now, however, if it's what Kyle was alluding to and they go out and they, they get a, de a second defensive line coach. And this rumor is out there that maybe they just they bring in a defensive line coach. He's the defensive line coach along with Larry Johnson senior for a year. And we just take the James Laurinaitis promotion and we delay it a year. That's the other rumor that's out there. I, I'm not going to swear to you which one is, I think is true. Cause I don't know. 
Um, but we, we do have some names and Kyle, I want to spend most of the time talking about the offensive coordinators because we are going to talk about who the next offensive coordinator is going to be. So I don't want to spend a ton of time, but I do have three potential names for a second defensive line coach at Ohio State. All right, let's let's hear at it. Sure. Um, we have Ben Albert. Uh, ben Albert is currently the assistant head coach, special teams coordinator, which Ohio State does need one of those um, and defensive line coach uh, at the University of Massachusetts. Why Ben Albert? A lot, a lot of hats that a lot of hats there. Well, when you work at those smaller schools, you don't have a giant roster of GAs and quality control guys. So you end up wearing some more hats. Um, ben Albert uh, was Knowles defensive line coach f- at Duke for two years. Um, he took over as a co-defensive coordinator um, along with Ohio State's current safety coach uh, after Knowles left. So uh, you, the two co-defensive coordinators at Duke could potentially that they replace Knowles could potentially come to Ohio state in this situation. Um, after he was at Duke for many years, uh, he did eventually leave Duke to take the Massachusetts job, which gave him a promotion in being an assistant head coach. And also UMass is the alma mater. Sometimes when the alma mater calls, you go. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, that's Ben Albert. There's a, he's a, what you would call a Jim Knowles guy. Uh, a couple other names out there, and I, I don't know. These are some names that are out there. I don't know how sincere these names are, uh, but one of them is Jason Taylor, who, if you uh, recognize that name, it's a it's a common name. But maybe you're thinking, oh, defensive line. Maybe that's yeah, that's him. Uh, former Miami Dolphin defensive end, Hall of Famer. He's currently the defensive line coach at the University of Miami. Um, why would he come to Ohio State? He's a Western PA guy. He played college in Akron. Like there's some geographic ties there. Um, writing down Ben Albert for further research. I I gave I gave I gave you the bullet points, honestly. Um, now, so maybe 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 you could entice Jason Taylor to come back up Ohio way. Um, he has been very effective. He's very young in his coaching career. He has been very effective at recruiting um, so far. But the way Miami's throwing NIL money around or at least promising NIL m- money around. Um, I I don't know how much of that is Jason Taylor versus the NIL money, but Ohio State lost uh, several defensive line recruits to Miami this cycle. So, you know, if you can't beat them, join them, maybe go hire Jason Taylor. That's all I'm saying. All right, Kyle, one more name. You want to handle this one? Uh, sure. Uh, Freddie Roach. Uh, probably a name anybody who's who's a diehard um, college football fan probably heard this name. Um, Freddie Roach. Um, he was the former, I think he's the former now, uh, defensive line coach uh, at we, Alabama. We don't know. Nothing official has been <laughs> said. We don't know. Uh, uh, the board could retain him. It's just it's very up in the air right now. Well, we're recording this on Sunday night, uh, releasing it on Monday morning. Who knows what could happen? But at the time we record this and yes, Kyle, I did Google it before uh, I did Google it at least this evening. Um, We don't have any we don't know about Freddie Roach yet. So who was the guy that went to South Carolina or do you mean USC? I'm not sure uh, who you're asking about. Defensive end. Uh, it's still not sure who you're talking about. Sorry. So those, those are three options in 2024. Not sure. Drawing a blank. Um, so th- those are three potential names. Um, Freddie Roach is a total wish cast on my part. Um to be honest, 42. Jason Taylor, there's at least some smoke out there. And Ben Albert feels like it makes sense. The question is, can you draw him away from an assistant head coaching job um, and the alma mater at, at Massachusetts? The alma mater to, might be the sticking point there. Yeah, according to Chris Lowe, Jared, um, Alabama is expected to keep Freddie Roach on staff. Not surprising well, at all. Um 
also not official, but not surprising. Uh, Freddie Roach is like Alabama to his core, to his roots, to his blood. Yes. Um, yes. Born and raised in Alabama. He spent most of his coaching career at in Alabama, he spent some time at South Alabama. I think he spent some time in some Mississippi schools as well. For him to come up to Ohio does feel odd, but hey, let me let me play podcast for a second. Okay, Kyle, Corey Dennis, uh, former Ohio State quarterbacks coach, uh, was also uh, not extended. We, we should say, I don't think any of these guys were fired. I think they all had their contracts expired and they simply weren't renewed. Um, but he's out. Uh, he was the quarterback's coach. Um, what we're hearing is that um, they would like to replace Corey Dennis with a, quote, experienced offensive coordinator. Uh, he wants a guy who will take ownership of the entire offense, including the offensive staff. Um, call I plays. A lot, I, think a lot, I think a lot of Buckeye fans are was wanting that for for a while now. Yeah, and, and Ryan Day now accepts that that's what needs to happen. Um, and what I think all of this points to, and Kyle, we're as guilty of this as anybody else. But honestly, I didn't hear anyone else bringing it up either. Everyone in the entire Ohio State sphere, fan sphere podcast sphere, blogosphere, we all 100% underestimated the importance of Kevin Wilson leaving. We all just sort Kevin Wilson, a, an incredibly experienced, incredibly successful offensive coordinator, uh, left to take a head coaching job. And we all just sort of shrugged and said, well, it's Ryan Day's offense. It'll be fine. And Ryan Day, a year without Kevin Wilson, has realized that, no, I, I need another Kevin Wilson. So I, I think everybody underestimated the importance of that loss. Um, so you go, you're going to go get a um, maybe he was the real OC all along. No, um, I don't think so. <sighs> so, yeah, uh, Ryan Day wants to be a CEO. He wants to have a defensive coach who's in charge of the defense, including the defensive staff. He wants to have an offensive coach who's in charge of the offense, including the offensive staff, and that those two guys report to him. This is the modern. You hear a lot of people talk about your head coach is a CEO. This is what we are now seeing in modern college football with so much stuff to manage. Um, it is It has been rumored. I don't know how true the rumor is, but it has been rumored uh, that Ryan Day wants an NFL guy to take over the role. Again, we're going to name some names here for you um, that are NFL guys that are not NFL guys. So we will we'll see how we have some options, some with NFL experience, some without NFL experience. Uh, we have some options. Kyle, do you want to start us off? Well, sure. Yeah. Um, Toledo head coach Jason Candle. Uh, he's a, he's, he's an Ohio guy. He's an Ohio guy through and through. Like he's, that's all he's been is, is his, his whole career was in, in Ohio. Um, started off over at Mount Union for a number of years before going, before going over to Toledo in 2009, became the, um, offensive coordinator in 2012 and then the head coach in 2016, um, I think this could be a huge win if Ohio State could um, bring him over as the offensive coordinator. But I mean, the the history is there. He he's he's an Ohio, he's an Ohio guy, and I think I think if if it makes sense, I I can I think this could be a a win. I think this could be a big big one. A home run hire for Ohio State if it happens. But um, he doesn't have NFL experience. So if that's really uh, an important thing for Ryan Day, then that's a it's a big check in the negative box. Um, and I think there's also the question of he's a successful coach at Toledo. Would he go? And I know it's Toledo and I know he would make more money at Ohio State, even as a offensive coordinator. Why go from a head coach of your own program to the offensive coordinator, even if it's as big a leap as Toledo to Ohio State? 
I mean, he's recently been rumored for head, co- head coaching jobs at Syracuse, Indiana, Michigan State. He obviously didn't get those jobs, but he was tied to them. So how much of a step backwards and is it a step backwards? Are you willing to take? Maybe, you know, you see it as like a, you know, maybe I'll never quite get that head coaching job at Toledo or outside of Toledo. If my only experience is Toledo, you know, maybe I need a, even if it's just all all, just offensive coordinator experience, maybe I need some power five experience. The Mac is falling further and further behind every year. Um, maybe it's time to move on to a power five job, even if it means giving up the reins. Um, but I'm maybe that's the, maybe that's going to be a thing we see moving forward. But for right now, I still find it really hard to hard to see. Um, I don't know. It, it feels weird. It feels like a weird move to me, but again, like I said, with the Mac falling further, further behind, maybe that's where we're heading. Yeah, so if we're going to kind of stick to that same theme, um, someone who hasn't had a lot of NFL experience, um, Joe Moorhead uh, from Akron is another is another name to kind of um, keep an eye out for. He's had quite a few number of years of um, college experience as an offensive coordinator. Ten. Um, yeah, 10, 10 years. Yeah, so he's he's had a lot of experience, but doesn't check that box of what Ryan Day's looking for, and that's that. And no experience there, but but yeah, I, th- I think it would be similar to to Jason Candle though, if um if Ohio State looks after uh, Joe Moorhead. Correct. Uh, I would say one of the big differences there, um, you know, I, and I'm not saying that the the offensive coordinator specifically Joe Moorhead would get two million dollars, but uh, it's it's worth noting. If we're using it as a comparison point, um, I don't know. Uh, does Jason Candle call plays for Toledo? I don't know if he currently does, but he was the offensive coordinator there for four years before becoming the head coach there. Um, so I don't know if he still does or not, but I'm sure he did at one point. Um, the back to Moorhead. One of the big differences between You know, we have two Mac head coaches between Jason Candle and Joe Moorhead. One of the big differences, however, um, is that Moorhead makes six hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. Which, again, like I was starting to say with Jim Knowles, Jim Knowles makes one point nine million as the defensive coordinator. Uh, And if you're wondering, Jason Candle makes one point one million, which is. All right, not not twice as much as 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 Moorhead, but it's still a significant difference. Um, so maybe in, in Moorhead, um, at 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 his age, um, maybe isn't looking to become a head coach again. Um, he was already uh the you know he might just be happy to sort of. Uh, let me also say this his. Candle has been a very successful head coach in Toledo. Moorhead has not been an incredibly successful head coach at Akron. Um, so it, it, it to me feels a little bit more believable because of the money difference, because of where they are in their careers. Moorhead might just be happy to become a defensive coordinator and be a def- or excuse me, an offensive coordinator and just be an offensive coordinator f- until he's ready to retire. Uh, he's maybe not as ambitious as the younger Campbell, who, like I said, has had his name tied to a bunch of head coaching jobs recently. All right. Um, another name, Jared, another name if we're going to. We're going to go with somebody who has some NFL experience here. Yeah. Uh, Daryl uh, Bevel, the Miami uh, passing coordinator. Lots mm-hmm. of years experience in the NFL as an offensive coordinator. 14, um, 14 years. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's including Kyle, coach. including seven years in Seattle. And, and we do know that Ryan Day has pulled from the Pete Carroll tree in the past. 
uh, including the 2014 Super Bowl in Seattle. He was the offensive coordinator. Yeah, and, and noteworthy too was that he was uh, with Urban Meyer, the one the one year in Jacksonville. The one half of yeah, the one, one half yeah <laughs> year, uh, and he actually took over as the head coach uh, after Urban was let go. So he was the he's twice been an interim coach in the NFL. Uh, one mm-hmm. of those times replacing Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. Um, and, and for what it's worth, his time in Jacksonville was not just shared with Urban Meyer, but also Tim Walton, uh, the current cornerback coach. So there are some connections there. And he is only. Only a. Um, passing game coordinator. In uh, for the Dolphins. So, you know, he can come to Ohio State and be like the head coach of the offense, which is, you know, essentially what's being offered, what Ryan Day is uh, allegedly envisioning for this role. Uh, Bevel is an interesting name, especially because he's been with McDaniels recently. I agree. And by the way, shout out to Buckeye Esquire, who uh, I've whose chats I've been reading a lot this episode. Um he and I were in the Discord server um, coming up with some of these names. So uh, shout out to Buckeye Esquire for um, contributing to some of this research. Yeah. The downside to Bavel, though, Jerry, is that he hasn't he hasn't really done anything in college. Right. This millennia. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> last time. Garsh. Uh, the last time. uh Bevel, Bevel, uh, coached in college football was in 1999, and that was a wide receiver coach role for Connecticut. So he has been very solidly an NFL guy for basically his entire career. Um, I believe, um, I believe that I, I think there's a question to be asked. Is does does this head coach of the offense, is he expected to recruit? Um, it's called delegating. I'm not sure if you're talking about me or Ryan Day or both. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that we'll see how that plays out. Um, we'll, we'll see. Does how, how, how far does Ryan Day want to take the NFL guy thing if he is dead set on the quote unquote NFL guy thing. Mm-hmm. Kyle, an have, here's name. another name with uh, basically no NFL experience. Uh, yeah. Talking about Dan Mullen. Uh, that's, yeah. that's an, that's an a, interesting name. That's, that's a name that it's a cache. A name. Of, that is a cat. Yes. Yes. Um, he was an offensive coordinator under urban Meyer at Florida head coach at Mississippi State and at Florida, a lot strong, strong tides with um, Ohio State here. Uh, Uh, But again, with Urban Meyer. (laughs) Yeah, with with Urban Meyer, yeah. Um, Again, like, it doesn't check the box for NFL experience, but I, it's definitely, definitely interesting name, Jared. So why, why did you write this one down? This is a name that's out there. Um, that this one's not purely my digging. This is a name that's out there. That's been tied to the job. Um, I mean, he's worked with Alex Smith at Utah. He worked with, he was the quarterback coach. He is a quarterback coach, which I, I think is probably preferential. If we're looking for someone, uh, an offensive coordinator with position experience, maybe preferentially, it would be the quarterback coach. Um, Worked with Alex Smith, Tim Tebow, Dak Prescott, um, good lineage of converting or of, you know developing excellent college football quarterbacks. Um, I, I I think he is a home run hire for Ohio State, like top to bottom home run hire for Ohio State. I think anyone would be happy to have Dan Mullen as their offensive coordinator. Um, so the case against here. Um, Day is rumored to be looking for a guy with NFL experience. Dan Mellon's not that guy. If that's something Ryan Day is actually all that interested in. Um, 
And we have to, at a certain point, ask how much do ties to Urban Meyer still matter? Urban's been gone for a while. Um, I think he's probably still holds some sort of position at Ohio State. But again, like we have to ask the question, do quote unquote Urban Meyer ties still matter or how much yeah. do they matter um, at this point? Um, mm hmm. He's been in the SEC since 2005. Does he want to coach in Ohio? Um, he, I'm sure whatever he'd be asking for, you, you a cachet name uh, is expensive. Mm -hmm. And like, I know he's like, oh, we're Ohio State, dump truck full of money, yada, yada, yada. I, I, I get it. But they're, the coaches still have budgets. Uh, you're already paying your defensive coordinator $1.9 million a season. You know, I'm sure there is a number that Dan Mullen can ask for that they would be forced to say no to. Um, yep. He's in TV. He's been in TV for the last two years. He might be perfectly happy in TV. Um, you might not leave TV except for a head coaching role. I don't know. Um, and, all this, and honestly, I just have a very strong feeling that just says this isn't going to happen. And I, I don't even necessarily like all, all the reasons I just gave you or me trying to justify that feeling, but I mostly just come back to a feeling that I, 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 I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, looking at, some, looking at some other names here, Jared, uh, that kind of, that kind of, um, really stand out to me here. Uh, Joe Brady, uh, the Buffalo interim offensive coordinator. Uh, Joe Brady was the, was the passing coordinator at LSU during that 2019 year. Um, he's currently Bikes is excited. He, he was, he was over at Carolina for a couple of years. Zach is and, excited. Yes. You just get ignore me uh, and keep reading Kyle. <laughs> he, he was the offensive coordinator over at Carolina for a couple of years, which that was not, not yeah. a good offense. The, not a good the, the offense Matt, at all. The Matt Rule experiment in Carolina did not go well. Uh, we've not seen a college guy goes to the NFL experiment turn out well in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not feeling as as much as a uh, few people in the Discord that's showing here. Just. I don't know. Like I, it's. I'm just not feeling it with, with Joe Brady though. I, 2019 I think he, I think, coordinator. I think, he, I think he may just, he just might just be a, Hey, I'm just going to stick to the NFL though. That, 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 that discussion is out there that he might just be quote unquote, an NFL guy now. Like that, that's his, his goal is just to remain in the NFL now. Um, and that's, uh, Esquire says the OC for the Eagles is intriguing. Well, be patient. Um, he might not want to recruit. That's the thing. Like a lot of guys don't like the recruiting process and, um, want to stay in the NFL. And I have heard that rumor about Joe Brady, that he wants to be an NFL guy now. And with the job he just did with and for Buffalo to turn that offense around after he took over as the offensive coordinator mid season for them this year, if he wants an, if he wants an NFL job, even if it's not at Buffalo, which I think it probably will be, but even if it's not at Buffalo, someone's going to make him an offensive coordinator in the NFL this year. So if that's his preference, I think he'll get it. Um, well, the next so, one Zach was kind of hinting to. Uh, but let the, me just but let me just say this about Joe Brady. Mm -hmm. He was the 2019 passing game coordinator mm -hmm. for LSU, and that's honest. And for for anyone who who. Yes, that well, LSU here, here, offense. It's one of the best well, offenses, the one of the most oh. innovative, incredible offenses I've seen in college football in a very long time. Um, yes, that is Joe Burrow's offense. Um, now that being said, that's also like Joe Burrow is probably your one tie. If you're, if you're looking for ties, mm -hmm. if you're looking for some sort of like, why would Joe Brady choose Ohio State? Like there, there's no shared history there the one no. closest thing you have to a shared history is joe burrow which is tangential it's it's 
it's it's a very thin string if you're looking for a connection. Gotcha. Uh, the other NFL coordinator you have on here, Jared, is the Philadelphia offense coordinator Brian Johnson. So why why do you think he would come to us to Ohio State with him just his first year at as an Eagle? Um, younger guy. Um, he's one of the few guys. Uh, he, he, only 36. One of the few guys I see. Um, they might be cleaning house. Spike says we'll see. Um, Johnson has been a longtime college guy this year. Didn't go great for the Eagles offense. Um, Johnson's one of the few guys on this list who I think has both really good experience, both in the NFL and in college. So if you're looking for someone who spans across both, I think he is one of those guys. Um, he was, uh, the offensive coordinator at Utah for two years. He was the offensive coordinator at Houston and Florida for one year each. Um, and he was just the offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Like he's mostly a college guy who, um, spent some time with the Eagles. One of those years being an offensive coordinator, um, uh, it makes him an intriguing name, kind of checks a lot of the boxes uh, for what Ryan Day is allegedly looking for. His list of guys coach is impressive. Uh, Esquire says, um, I, I would say part of the problem in terms of quarterbacks. Yes, he is a quarterbacks guy. Um, now, I will say this. No obvious ties to the coaching staff or to Ohio or to Columbus. If we're looking for, you know, shared DNA in that respect, the closest you're going to get is that Brian Johnson is a Dan Mullen guy and Dan Mullen was an urban guy. But we already questioned how much does the Urban Meyer connection still matter directly for Dan Mullen, let alone a Dan Mullen disciple. So, um uh, it's, again, it's, 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 it's a connection, but it's a very thin, very thin connection. That who, who, who push is pretty devastating to defend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how about Joe Philbin? Brian Ferentz. No, 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 Austin. <laughs> Joe Philbin. Uh, no and no, Spike says. I know a lot of people are not going to be super excited for Joe Philbin. Um, he coached uh, Kyle Allen, uh, Derek King uh, at Houston, Felipe Franks and Kyle Trask. Um, and then Jalen Hurts with the Eagles. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, just, just so we're clear, I was talking about um, Brian Johnson there, not Joe Philbin. Joe Philbin, um, already in Columbus, if that's worth anything to anybody, you can't get more connected to the current staff. Um, he was uh, he coached Brian Hartline, which is the connection that brought him to Columbus to begin with. I So I've heard um, he is 62 years old. For better or worse, um, I, I mean, even if you bring in one of these guys who's 36, 37 years old, if they're a really good offensive coordinator, you're likely to lose them in two years to a promotion to a head coaching job, or maybe they go back to the NFL in two years anyway. So a lot of people see someone who's 62 and they're like, oh, you might retire soon. But honestly, if your offensive coordinator is it's it's difficult to find like that guy who is old enough to not want a promotion, but young enough that you're not worried about them retiring soon. That, that that's a very difficult, you know, medium to find. Uh, so Joe Philbin, 62 years old. Um, he was uh, the green Bay offensive coordinator for five years, including winning a super bowl during that time. Um, he was the head coach of the dolphins for four years. Um, Awful <laughs> spikes, a Dolphins fan. I'm not asking him to be a head coach in the NFL. I'm asking him to be an offensive coordinator in college football. That's that's at least three rungs lower. Like mm -hmm. 
I'm not asking him to, I'm, if we we're talking about the head coaching position spikes, I'd be saying no as well, but we're not talking about the head coaching possession. Uh, we're we're taught. I don't want Dan Mullen to be the head coach at Ohio state either. I don't want Joe Moorhead to be the head coach at Ohio state either. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about offensive coordinator. Um, case against um, is that he hasn't hold, held an actual like college staff role, a recruiting type role since he was the Iowa offensive line coach from 1999 to 2002. And he hasn't been an yeah. actual offensive coordinator at any level since 2018. So I also kind of feel like if Ohio state was going to make this move, they would have already made it since he's already in Columbus. Is that a, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's also a feeling I get. What is his role now? Uh, offensive quality control, offensive special advisor, something like that. Special consultant to the offensive court. I don't know. Something along now, those lines. Now, a name that's been offensive analyst um, is what he is. Offensive analyst. It's actually in my notes, apparently. I a name that's been running around a lot this weekend here, Jared, and just depending on if he gets the the job from the Chicago Bears, if he doesn't get that, I think Ohio State's going to really, really go after a the offensive coordinator out of uh, Kentucky, uh, Liam Cohen. Uh, Cohen is another is another name that Ohio State is really, really looking at. Yes, um, he what he was the he's been going back and forth with. Uh, the Rams back to Kentucky, back to the Rams, back to Kentucky. Um, he was he was a wide receiver coach, then assistant quarterback coach, then the offensive coordinator at both Kentucky and at um, as the at the LA Rams as well too. So definitely a name to uh, keep an eye out for this week to see if the Chicago Bears does pick him up, and if not, you. Put money down that house seat. I, I think it's going to go hard after after Liam Cohen. I don't have him higher on the list because I, I, I do expect him to stay in the NFL. Um, yeah. But I, I say I can say that about a lot of these guys, including offensive coordinator Thomas Brown. Uh, next on the list, um, presumably on he presumably will be on the market. Um, after Carolina has cleaned house of their GM and their their head coach. Um, has experience. Uh, one of the few guys on this list has experience at both levels as an offensive coordinator. Um, he was the offensive coordinator for Miami under Mark Richt for three years. Um, he was the offensive coordinator for the Panthers this year. Um, he was an assistant head coach for the Rams for two years. Um, good mix of, uh, experience at both levels. Uh, like a lot of these guys, he uh, doesn't have any obvious ties to the uh, to Ohio State or the current coaching staff. Um, his background is, is as a running backs coach and not a quarterbacks coach. I'm not 100 percent sure how much that matters to Ryan Day, but. That's, you know, if if he is looking for a quarterbacks coach, that could be a knock against him um, and, and like. Uh, like Brian Johnson, his his offensive coordinator experience in the NFL uh, is one only one year. But unlike Brian Johnson, he does have those two assistant head coaching years uh, on top of the one offensive coordinator year. Mm -hmm. Another name I hear out there a lot is the current Jacksonville offensive coordinator, Press Taylor. And um, no. No. No, 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 no. I, I do not understand why this name is out there. I feel like I have to bring his name up simply because it's been out there so much. Uh, it's Press Taylor, the offensive coordinator for Jacksonville. That name is just out there oh. tied to this job a lot. No. And no. Stop it. Jared just scared another, the shit out of me. Sorry, I was using my of, I was using my dog trainer voice. Another name uh, that's kind of I am not I will not say this about anybody else on this list. I will not say this about anybody else on this list. This would be a terrible hire. This would be a terrible hire. Uh, I think one of the reasons why you see this name on this list is because there are some shared Chip Kelly ties. And I don't care 
No. You want to hear another uh, NFL guy that's yes. been floating around Ohio State? I, th- I think I think you're going to get a lot of mix. I think you're going to get a lot of mixed feelings or mixed um, reactions. Bill O'Brien. Yeah, that name's out there. Um, I I just don't consider yeah, that exactly. Super- <laughs> exactly. I think I think it'd be a good hire for Ohio State. Um, I just I don't see it. That name's out there. I don't see it. Um, no, it wouldn't, Jerry. I mean, yeah, I he he'd be a good offensive coordinator for Ohio State. Um, I think you can get guys who are just as good who are cheaper. Um, Buckeye Squire letting it known he's not a fan of Leonard Cohen, which I don't think is his name. That's a country singer, but I know who you meant. Uh, <laughs> Liam, Liam, <laughs> Liam Cohen. You're looking for Leonard Cohen. Um, is a country singer from I believe either the fifties or the sixties. Well, I don't know. I don't know old country that well. I I could be way off on the decade. Um. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, couple more names to toss out there um I, i'm gonna go over these ones pretty quickly because i don't think any of them are all that realistic um kellen moore who's the offensive coordinator or was the offensive coordinator for the chargers uh the chargers did just fire brandon staley the head coach so i i don't know if kellen moore is currently still uh employed by the chargers or not um he doesn't have any college experience he's purely an nfl guy um he coached uh, he was the offensive coordinator for uh the cowboys for four years was retained by mike mccarthy he was originally hired by jason garrett was retained by uh mike mccarthy um no one affiliated with staley can come near my beautiful team uh, he's he's more of a Mike McCarthy guy than he is a Brandon Staley guy. He was only with Brandon Staley for I think a single year. Um, still tainted. Okay, fair enough. I, I, I guys, I already said that. I already said I didn't think Kellen Moore was all that likely. So you you don't you 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 can calm down a little, guys. Come on now. Um, Rams offensive coordinator Mike Lafleur. Um. Spent four years uh, as the passing game coordinator in San Francisco, two years as the offensive coordinator for the Jets and became the Rams offensive coordinator in 2013. Um, He does not have college experience worth discussing. Um, No obvious ties to Ohio State or the staff. Um, Seems like an NFL guy. Uh, and one last name, I think, uh, I think Esquire brought him up before. Um, this would be an amazing hire, but it's not going to happen. It's going to be amazing hire, but it's not going to happen. Eric B um, being absolutely amazing home run hire all around, uh, his, his, his work with the chiefs off as the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs speaks for itself. Uh, helped build the powerhouse that was the Chiefs over the past few years. A lot of people look at his departure from the Chiefs uh, because he was not the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs this year as a potential contributing factor to maybe why the Chiefs didn't look as good offensively this year. Um, He is presumably available because the Washington Commanders is under new ownership and they have a clear, they've totally cleared house in Washington, D.C. so unless they decide to retain him, we'll see um, the case against uh, he just he did the solid NFL guy, in my opinion, um, his name's already being tied all over the NFL to both offensive coordinator jobs and head coaching jobs. Um, I, I just don't see him as an NFL guy or excuse me, as a college guy. I, I see him pretty solidly as an NFL guy at this point. Um, they, that, that, that's a fantasy name. That is a real fantasy name in my opinion. 
but I've seen I've seen a lot of people bring it up. So I thought this is this is the exact opposite, in my opinion, of when we're talking about Press Taylor. I think both of those. I see I only really even bring him up because I see so many people bringing his name up that I felt like I kind of had to include him in the discussion because, again, so many people have brought his name into the conversation. Um, but for totally opposite reasons, I, I don't see this happening. Yeah, I I don't either. I don't either. I think I think he'll just he'll stick to sing in the NFL. OK, a um, couple bonus names. Now, I already mentioned at the top or uh, when we started talking about the offensive coordinators to begin with. Um, already mentioned um, that. Uh, the offensive coaching, the, the new offensive coordinator is going to be given authority to retain or not retain anyone they want on the offensive coaching staff, except potentially Brian Hartline. Of course, if if the offensive coordinator, if you gave the offensive coordinator the option to get rid of Brian Hartline and they did get rid of Brian Hartline, that's cause to fire them. In my opinion, that's that's negligence and you're fired. Um, they. they they should. Are you serious? Has he Kyle? Oh, Kyle just added something to the notes. I'm pissed. Um, but that does. OK, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, the, the new offense, offensive coordinator will allegedly uh, be given full reign to do whatever he wants with the Ohio State offensive coaching staff. So if your name's not Brian Hartline, your job's not necessarily safe. I think is is the takeaway there. Um, so if Ohio State were to uh, change up their offensive coaching staff, I want to toss a name out there. Um, Eric Wolford, who is the I think we can now safely say Kyle former <laughs> offensive line, excuse me, offensive line coach uh, for Alabama. Uh he has 20 years experience as an offensive line coach uh, in the FBS, as well as two years of experience as an offensive line coach in the NFL. Um, he was the head coach of Youngstown State for five years. Uh, he is an Ohio native. He's a Youngstown native. Uh, his name is Eric Wolford. And uh, according to what Kyle just said in the notes, he does now officially seem to be available. Um, he well, you know, it, it's hard to say it. Uh, he was the line coach at Kentucky before being at Alabama, where he recruited uh, pretty well, considering it was Kentucky. And then, of course, he went to Alabama and he started killing it as a as a recruiter. But sometimes that's Bama. Sometimes that's not him. Sometimes, you know, sometimes that's not the coach. Sometimes that's Bama. So. You know, I, I can sit here and say he rec successfully recruited C uh, Caden Proctor, but. How much of that is him and how much of that but, is Saban is a question worth asking. But looking at Eric Wolford, like look at the look at this year of Alabama. Probably the worst offensive line we've seen of Alabama in many, many years. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that something is that something that you would want over at Ohio State though? They they went with a younger group. Um but I think that's a question worth asking. I think it's a question where I think we also saw the offensive line get better as the season went. And, you know, Ohio State does have McLaughlin on the roster now, so they can ask him for his opinion. Hey, you know, what'd you think of Eric Wolford? You know, you you, you have a you have a you have a mole now. He, he can tell you what he thought, honestly, of Coach Wolford. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Ultimately, it'll probably end up being a lot of times it'll end up being someone that the offensive coordinator has ties to anyway. Um, but, you know, with the Alabama coaching staff in shambles and with Ohio State losing several recruiting battles to the off Alabama offensive line room, uh, and I mean several battles, more on that on the Tuesday episode. Um it was an interesting name to bring up. Mm -hmm. Now I had a second name here for potential offensive line coach, but Kyle has informed me that he is officially off the market. 
uh, as as we are recording this, I was just going to bring up and it was a total wish cast. Uh, this is just going to bring up that maybe one of the best offensive line coaches in all of college football uh, was on the market. Uh, offensive line coach formerly for Washington, but as Kyle informs me now officially with Alabama, God, Alabama just got. How does Alabama lose the best coach in college football history and then turn around and. You know, now now they have like the best, maybe the best offensive line coach in college football as a result in in the shakeup. Um, yeah, Bama getting uh, DeBoer is so annoying. Well, they didn't just get DeBoer. He also brought along his offensive line coach, Scott Huff. Um who's now officially at Alabama. I was bringing, I was going to bring him up as a guy that Ohio state could potentially go look after, but I, in my defense, I shut, I Kyle, Kyle can back me up on this. It specifically says in the notes, uh, the Huskies won the Joe Moore award in 2013. Uh, although it seems likely he either remains employed at UW or goes to Alabama. I said it in the notes. He did guys. I said it in the notes. Uh, all of those guys, Kyle, you just put down in the chat are officially going to Alabama. Yep, that's the that's the current staff as of right now. Yeah, they did, in fact, keep uh, Freddie Roach, um, keeping Robert Gillespie at Alabama. But for the most part, it looks like a Washington takeover for the Alabama coaching staff. Um. Grub Def going to Alabama. Uh, that's what Kyle said. That's yeah. what it. That's what it appears. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, that sucks. All right. Um, it's, it's well, Ohio official. State can it's, kick it's, the tires yeah. for Eric Wolford. Officially. Although, again, without a that's supposedly the offensive coordinator's job, and uh, we don't have an offensive coordinator yet, so maybe not. Yep. Okay, Kyle. Um, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of names, Jared. That's a lot, that's of, a lot names. of names. There's a lot of names. <laughs> we cast a wide net here. Um, we cast such a wide net that I'd be surprised if Ohio State doesn't up, end up hiring one of these guys for the offensive coordinator job. Um, I, I think I have my money on Joe Moorhead. I, I think is... I, I think that's where... I'm going to, I'm going to put my money. Um, maybe that or Daryl Bevel, the passing game coordinator for the, for the dolphins. I think, I think those will be my two names, Kyle. Do you, do you have a favorite, a favorite or two as far as likelihood, not necessarily who you want, but I don't think the fan base will be happy with the Moorhead news. A uh, no. lar large parts of the fan base are convinced that you're going to get Eric Bieniemy or or Joe Brady when I I don't think that those names are all that realistic. Despite the fact we included them in this list, I included them in this list largely to say that I don't think that they're realistic. Um, you might want to include Dan Mullen in that conversation as well. A home run hires for Ohio State that I don't think are super realistic. I I think I think to me of all the names that we've said here, I think the home run, the home run hire, even though hasn't had really any college experience in very long time. I think I think um, Bevel. I think Bevel. When you have you have when Ryan Day's looking for that NFL experience, bringing him to Ohio State. I mean that that checks that box over and over. Well, and he's looking for a he's looking for a head coach of the offense, right? This is allegedly what Ryan Day is looking for as a head coach of the offense. I think Bavel fits that. And also he's 54. I think 54 is kind of a perfect age. I don't think he's going to. Like. He's not going to retire soon. And he might be past the point where he's looking for a head coaching gig. Of course, we, we said the same thing about Coach Knowles, and then Coach Knowles did interview at Duke this offseason, but he, he didn't take it or wasn't offered it at the least. 
Um, but at 54, you might be able to get an offensive coordinator who will come in. And unlike some of the 36 year old guys who we mentioned in this list, not leave in two years to go take a NFL job or to take a head coaching job. Like you might get a, a long-term stable offensive coordinator out of Bavel. I think Bavel would be a good hire because you don't need him to recruit. I think that's an important thing. I think Ryan Day is the quarterback recruiter, always has been. Um, it, 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 you know, it sure as hell wasn't Corey Dennis. If Corey Dennis was recruiting all the quarterbacks coming to Ohio State, they wouldn't have let him go. Not, not that anyone is surprised to find out that Ryan Day is actually the recruiter for the quarterback position but if you needed proof there's your proof yep so yeah you could bring in bevel to come in be the quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator and not recruit kind of in the same way that you're bringing james laurinitis maybe as a part of the major staff because Knowles isn't some great recruiter and that's why you bring in laurinitis to do the recruiting for the linebackers instead I don't know that the coordinators will be required to be good or great recruiters. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, Jared. I think I think that is it. I think we can go ahead and call call this episode here. Um, any any last any last no. words? Any? Nah, we're 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 over. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, C.J. Stroud can ball. C.J. Yeah. Stroud. Uh, C.J. Stroud. It only took one half to. Uh, to show his dominance over uh, over Cleveland in their um, in their opening uh, playoff game here, and yeah, sorry, Browns CJ fans. Stroud, CJ Stroud looking awesome. Sorry, Browns fans, but CJ Stroud's yeah. goat. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> He's out there recruiting okay. for Ohio yeah. State. If it makes you feel any better, if you're both a Browns and a Buckeyes fan, know that CJ Stroud was out there recruiting for Ohio State. Keep it keep it short and sweet there. Well, I'll just I'll just end it right there. All right. Uh, everyone come join the Discord server where uh, if you liked this like super dense, nerdy version of the Sloopcast, which we don't always do, but this one definitely was. These are the, the a lot of this was born out of a conversation that, again, Buckeye Esquire and I uh, were having in the Discord server this week. Like. As goofy as Kyle and I are in the show in the server, it's it's very like detailed and nerdy at times so if, if this is the kind of content you like come join us at the discord server discord.thesloopcast.com um tonight's ending music we brought to you by a columbus based band called of two minds of two minds uh will be playing at ace of cups in columbus which is uh north campus old north columbus what, what do we call that region it's like North Campus or Old Columbus, Old North, Old, old North Columbus. I forget which Ace of Cups. You can Google it, guys. Just Google it. Old North, I think, is what they call that area of Columbus. It's on High Street. Uh, Ace of Cups. Uh, they'll be playing a concert there January 26th. Um, again, the name of this band is Of Two Minds. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage you. Oh, by the way, I sometimes I link to the song in the show notes. I'm linking to the concert page where you can then link and buy tickets. And so I'm linking to bands in town. So if you're interested in go seeing this show, link in the description. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, uh, these are of two minds.